Hey, Margie here. Happy 2024. If figuring out the right treatment for osteoporosis, osteopenia, or what you can do to have strong, healthy bones throughout life is something you're interested in this new year, then you are in the right place. Because today I'm going to share some tips from my upcoming summit that you can put into practice right away that will have positive effects on both your bones and overall health. And to do this, my husband, Craig, is joining me, and he's an OBGYN. So lots of great information. Stay tuned. Welcome, Craig. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'm really excited because it's the new year, and I want to share some of the really fabulous tips from the summit so people don't even have to wait the two weeks. They can get started on some of these things right away that really can make a big difference to their bones overall health and happiness. And I'm looking forward to listening to you because I need some more tips in my practice. God knows I know a lot, but I need more of the Margie stuff. So why don't you tell us a little bit about some of your new tips on osteoporosis treatments? Okay. So I think what we'll do, I think we're going to start, we're going to start with the medications. And, you know, in my past summits, we The first summit, I didn't even address it because it was all unnatural approaches to osteoporosis, and I didn't even address the medications at all because I wanted to share all the incredible things that people can do besides medications. But what happened with that is that people then thought that you know there was no place for medications. They didn't realize that there absolutely is a place, and the key is we want to prevent fractures. And so then the second summit, what I did... I just asked every doctor, you know, all the integrative doctors who were on the summit, what was their feeling about medications? But for this summit, I decided to take it a step further and have a whole talk on medications, but with Dr. Keith McCormick, who I think is the absolutely best person to talk about this because he's been use me using medications for so many years in conjunction with an integrative approach. And I think when we look at it like that, we see how they can be effective and when they're needed. And, you know, I, I think that really helps people make a decision because that's probably one of the biggest questions I ask, you know, should I go on medication? And it's not a simple answer. And it's not an answer one can make without, without doing a lot of evaluation to really see where they're at. So I think this talk is so incredible. And the good news is that in the summit, there's three talks that can be that with the minute you register, you get three early talks. So I made sure this was one of the talks that people get right away with Dr. McCormick. And I really asked him the details, what numbers on your test and how do you decide? So I think if you're considering a medication as part, I mean, this is the key, you know, the, what I liked about Dr. McCormick is that first, his number one um, approach is through diet, nutrition, and exercise. And the number two area is medication. So he that says it's necessary for some people, but it's not the number one thing. Because what I see, I don't know if you see this also, Craig, is that when people, people think it's an either or, you know, okay, I'll go on medication or I'll try the natural approach. Well, it's not like that at all. It's that regardless of what you do, even if you decide to use a medication, you still need to address diet, lifestyle, you know, nutrition, all those stress reduction, all those other pieces are critical. So I think this talk is so great because it just, it will just help you if you're on the fence. And it's, you know, the key is this, you know, because there are people who have very low bone densities, maybe like minus 4.5 on their DEXA. And they're like, no matter what, I'm not using medications. And then they have a fracture. What Dr. McCormick explains is so we can use this temporarily. It's not forever. But to get us out of the woods, if we really do have low bone density, to help build bone or stop the bone loss for the short term while we're doing all the other integrative approaches. So I think that was just so incredible. I have a couple other things to say about that, but do you want to share what you've had with your experience, you know, what, what patients ask you in terms of medications? Well, I think what I'd rather say first is that too often I see patients who come in who are already being rec with recommendations to start medicines 
after about a 10 minute talk in their primary care doctor's office. They got a DEXA scan report back. They have osteoporosis and there's not much conversation other than you should go on medication. And I think that's a lost opportunity. And so I always ask them to go back and, and look at lifestyle and, and exercise, so all the things you mentioned in detail, and also to go back and, and find someone who's helped them dig down and figure out what the root causes are. And then they can go back and make those decisions. But I mean, in a 10 or 15 minute visit with your primary doctor, you really are not gonna get much more than just a quick response. And, and they think they're doing a good job and they go on to the next patient and don't even think a second thought about what they just told you. Right, and the truth is I don't fault them because that's what they've been taught. You know what, if someone has minus 2.5, get them on Bosomax, act, whatever it is. And you know what else is interesting that I learned through Dr. McCormick? Is that sometimes, this is so horrible, the insurance will say, if someone, because there's different classes, and I'm not going to go into that because just listen to the talk, it's so good, but that the insurance might say, oh, no, no, you can't go on one of the bone building medications. First, you have to try one of the um, bisphosphonates or one of the Fosamax or Actinol because it's a lot less expensive, when in reality, that's not the right medication. It's, I mean, I thought that was just so horrible. So it's just something you need to dig deep figure out. And that's where, just like you said, 15 minutes is not going to be enough. And what I really love, the some of the testing, and that's also in the summit. Doctor, He does two talks. One was really an amazing talk on, and I think it's day one actually, on, on testing. And besides the talk that he does, which really goes into the testing, and I think the biggest thing in that testing is the CTX and the P1MP. And the reason being, you know, when you get the value on the DEXA, you just don't know. Is someone actively losing bone? Or did they just never develop enough, you know, when they're a child, what's going on? And so the CTX is such an amazing test because it shows that, it shows the osteoclast activity, the bone breakdown, what's happening. And, you know, you can have a very high CTX and meaning you're actively losing bone. So that person is going to be treated very, very differently in, at, versus someone who doesn't have that and maybe just didn't develop bone as a kid. You know, they were a couch potato or they had eating disorders, you know, just so many issues or they're having issues with their osteoblast, the bone building cells, which you would find out from the P1MP. So he goes, I'm not going to spend all the time on that, but I thought that what the other thing I did do, because there's so much information and um, with, with, with his talk, but what I also added as part of the gifts people get when they, when they join the summit is I did a 30 minute, actually probably 40 minute recording just on, you know, integrative approaches to osteoporosis and the basics but I also included a four-page handout about the different testing. So it makes it clear, it makes it easy, you could have it as a reference. So that the minute you join the summit, and it's all free, you can just download, you know, go to the gifts and it's the gift that goes with improve your bone health video course. So under that, you'll get the four-page handout on the testing. So, but before we end the testing, I just wanted to say two things that I wanted to share that was part of his talk, because I think it's so important, that if you have, a lot of times, as you said, because it's 15 minutes the doctor spends with you, and they put you on, let's say, Fosamax or Actinel, which for some people, it bides time. You know, some people, it does stop the breakdown of bone. However, oftentimes, I've had people who've had terrible digestive problems from that, and they had digestive issues before that. So if you have any digestive issues, this would absolutely not be something you should go on. You could use Reclast instead, which is an infusion, which is not going to affect your digestion. And then the second thing I wanted to say is that you have to have an exit strategy because sometimes the doctors don't tell you that, for example, if you go on Prolia, which has pros and cons, one of the pros, though, it can really help the hip. But the con is that if you go off it, you can't just go off it because your bone density will start decreasing worse than it was before you started. So you have to have an exit strategy, which is usually going on something like reclass. But anyway, 
you can listen to the whole talk. It goes in detail, but I just wanted to share those things with everybody. Yeah, and I think you know, when you said infusion, you meant to tell a patient that infusion means you get it intravenously, right, Margie? Yes. Yes, good. Now, I'm very excited about the second area you're going to talk about today, which is about exercise, because this is something that kind of got you into this whole arena of osteoporosis and it's an area where you seem to have found a niche and, and found an awful lot of people who are on the summit who are fantastic in this area. So I'd really love to hear what your newest and interesting information is about osteoporosis and exercises. Yeah, I think the big takeaway here is that you know, people were afraid if you have osteoporosis, you know, we know resistance exercise is important and that's been talked about. However, they've really been showing now that you can do more, you know, high intensity resistance training. And we talked about it in the summit before about, you know, about this Lithmore study. So this time where they did, they took people with osteoporosis and osteopenia, and they put them through a much higher intensity training program than really was ever done before. But the results were so profound where they had improvement in bone density and you know, significant reduction in bone loss compared to the control group. But the good, the interesting part about that is Dr. Belinda Beck. She's a new talk on the summit this year. She's, you know, the investigate the person who was part of the Lithmore study. And what she did, which I love, is she took this information, which was so positive from the study, and put it into clinical practice. Like, okay, let's see how we can use this great result and create something. So she created this bone clinic in Australia. And since then, I think it's been eight and a half years now or so, she was telling me she has had over 1,200 people go through this clinic in Australia. And the results have just been incredible. You know, 50% reduction in falls, 75% reduction in fractures. And what she did, she has special software where she can actually see 3D, the shape of the bone, the architecture of the bone. So even way more than you can see in the DEXA. And what she found was the femoral neck, which is part of the hip, which is the area that's so prone to fracture and something that we, you know, hip fractures, when somebody has a hip fracture, a quarter of the people will die within a year because of complications. So we really want to prevent this. But what she found with this lift more and these exercises, these high impact, was that it actually changed the shape and the thickness of what's called the cortex, the cortex, the lateral cortex of the femoral neck. So that's where the fractures you know, usually start and, be, and increase. So I think that was just so exciting. And that news was like hot off the press. She had just reported it in, in, to a, a meeting that she's part of in, with a bone mineral research group in Australia and New Zealand. So the fact that doing this high intensity training was safe, well, that's the incredible thing, safe and that it actually is changing, besides just changing bone density, it's changing the architecture and preventing falls and fractures. And But I just want to say a caveat to that. She felt very, very, very strongly that you must work with, you know, her program, it's called the Onera program, but you must work with someone who's been trained. And she only trains physical therapists and exercise physiologists who have the knowledge because it has to be done safely. I mean, she takes two months to prepare people for strength training. So I think that that's just very important. It's not something that you can just watch this, look at the study and say, I'm going to do this because you really want it to be safe. And when we're lifting that kind of weight, we need to prepare. But when we do, she went on and on about how the women were empowered and they're lifting things their husbands couldn't lift and how it's just such a win-win fantastic situation. So I just wanted to share that about that. Is there anything you want to say? Because I have some more in things I want to say. Keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm taking notes right now. <laughs> um, but on that note, so that's the lift more. And I think it's so exciting that's been put into clinical practice. And in a previous podcast, actually, um, that we did, two, I think, two podcasts ago, and it was just funny because I asked Belinda during that talk, was there anybody that, you know, anybody that she recommended or anybody that's doing this in the United States? And she told me there's one person, Claudia Thomas and Tomas. 
and she's 20 minutes away from, from where we live. And so anyway, I had Claudia on and she's actually going to be doing a program, which I'll put in the show notes too with my class on January 4th. So really soon, but she's, you know, so she can't do the lift more, but she's doing all the preparation. So I'm going to be doing this, which I'm really excited about because I want to go through it myself and just experience it and see the difference so I can even be better. I know from doing it, participating, I'll be able to really like see what it's all about and help people. But I wanted to talk about Sherry Betts. She was a fan favorite. She's been on the summit before and her talk from the before is still there, which has amazing exercises in it. And so many people just thanked me because they really learned how to do things safely and they really got a better understanding of what they should be doing in terms of exercise. So this time when Sherry came back, she spent, it, it's, a, it's around an hour talk, the first half hour, really going over the all the new research and what the research shows. And I think that's important because I believe if you understand the principles, then it's not as though you just see an exercise and, oh, Sherry or Margie told me I can't do that. You understand the why behind it. Then you'll, you'll, you'll be able to go to any exercise class and say, no, no, I know why, how I have to modify that or that's not safe for me or, you know, so anyway, but a couple of things I wanted to share. So when we take the work of Belinda and we learn that this impact, which impact is forces going through the bones, you know, impact training, but we want to do it safely. So Sherry showed us some things that we could do that were safe and just ways we can take that concept of impact and put it into our lives. So for example, and she's the first day of the summit. So you can learn this like right away and starts on January 15th. But some things you can do so you can raise both heels in good posture, of course, stabilizing, you know, 20 times lifting the heels. And so you do that with two legs. Then she progresses when you are good at that to one leg, you know, doing one leg heel raises. And then she does something called heel drops where your knees are bent and you drop down on the surface, but you would start on a soft surface, make sure you can tolerate it and then progress to a hard surface. So she shows all of these, but I just wanted to share that, you know, if you're not going to, not everybody obviously is going to do this lift more program, but there are ways that you can start doing impact exercises to even, even add more, um, you know, just even help enhance your bone, your bones even more. And that's what they've been showing. But the other thing in the, that I that you probably I know you've been telling me that for some reason every all your patients are coming in talking about the pelvic floor. You want to share that before I go into this? Well, my patients who've had babies are all are gravitating towards going for pelvic floor uh, therapy after they deliver, and they're really trying, interested in trying to rebuild their cores, which definitely get weakened during the pregnancy and delivery process. So it's it's a, a new area for therapy to really kind of go after these this patient population and it will translate in 20, 30 years into a population who are going to be ready for Sherry Betts's information and the stuff that you're talking about now. So true. And I think this is so important because it's not too late. I, I find it so sad when people, you know, are really having problems of incontinence and other things that truly aren't necessary and can be prevented and they just don't know. But if we're the point that's so important. If we're starting to do strength training, we must, must stabilize the pelvic floor because otherwise we could put too much force on it and actually aggravate it. So there's a whole talk by Issa Herrera that I think so important how you can do a mini Kegel as part of your stabilization. And she goes in detail into this. So I, I just strongly recommend that because I, te I teach everybody this also, and this is her area of expertise, but she, she really demonstrates and shows us how we can even do some of the resistance training while we're stabilizing. So I just think a lot of people, and rarely in exercise classes that I see, even good ones, do they say, okay, you know, make sure that when you're doing your stabilization, they may say belly button in and up and some good stabilization principles. But I think it's so important to include the pelvic floor. And I just wanted to mention that as people are, are starting to, you know, okay, that's why I love the new year. And that's why I'm so excited that I did this two weeks out, you know, that starting in January, because I do believe in January, we're all psyched. We, we sort of manifest what we want for the year and feeling empowered with strong, healthy bones, I know is on the top of so many people's 
list. So I'm trying to give resources so people can can achieve that. Um, and so a couple other things I just wanted to share from Sherry's talk that I thought were very interesting and I think can help people right away. That you know, some people think the longer, the more time you spend exercising, that's what's most important, but that's not what they found. The research showed that prolonged exercise periods are not as effective as short-term bouts of high intensity followed by a rest period. So it's that high intensity, that increased resistance, that's what's building bone. It's not, it's not going for a walk for four hours. <laughs> Talking about walking, the other thing I get asked all the time, and I see this all the time when we're walking, I'm sure you do too, is that people are wearing wrist and ankle weights. But the truth is the research has not shown, it doesn't enhance anything in terms of the effectiveness of the exercise, and there's no change in bone mineral density when people do that. I find it just messes up the walk. I find you're not as loose, and you can't really get as much, you know, put as much into the walk in terms of relaxation, good mechanics. So it did not show anything. So if you're doing that, you're not really, you know, it's not really giving you much benefit. Another thing is a lot of people walk with the weighted vest and what they've shown is that does not increase bone mineral density. And what I found, you know, a lot of people like it and a lot of therapists use it and had good results. However, what I found is that certain people, it just puts pressure on their shoulders, it tightens their muscles. So it's not something that I'm a big fan of because sometimes it just changes the mechanics. But there are people, you know, who do get benefit from it. But this I thought was so interesting, you know, because a lot of, again, I'm a big believer in walking and things, but we want to do what's most effective. And so Sherry mentioned that the seated leg press that people can do at the health club is more effective in targeting that proximal femur. That's the area that we're worried about fractures than walking or running endurance exercises. So I thought I thought that was you know very important. And when the research also has showed that the combination of exercise is more effective. So it's not just doing one thing, doing different things, you know, doing, yes, maybe doing some Pilates in addition to the strength training or whatever it is. So, and the other thing is no matter where you're at, and I believe this so strongly, you know, because some people are like, I can't do this resistance. And that's okay. Not everybody can. But, and it depends also. So for a person who's a couch potato, just lifting your arm without any weight is going to be resistance for you. You know, and two pounds is probably a lot. So it's very individual where everybody starts is so different. But what everybody can do is balance exercises. And typically falls don't just happen. They happen because you know, falls and fractures don't just happen. They happen because of a fall. So working on your balance is something I, I'm such a big believer in. And, you know, it's something everybody can do. It's not hard. It doesn't take a lot of time. But the results are amazing. I mean, just think, because working on your balance, you, uh, you prevent a fall. And I see that all, all the time, which is, which is so wonderful. So in terms of balance exercises on the summit, I just want to tell people my, my absolute favorite actually is the, is the Bone Strong Qigong with Matt Jeffs. And he's on the summit and he actually demonstrates this really great little routine. So you can get a routine to get you started. And, and he put in you know some of the things that are, that are really great for your balance. And I think the reason it's so good is because you know, I love standing on one foot. That's good. But in, in the Qigong, you're moving back and forth. And so your feet are getting that input and side to side. So then one day, if you're walking and you get thrown off balance, you have this movement and you're able to correct yourself. And that's what I've seen with so many people when they've done balance exercise and especially with the Qigong. So, I, and so I, I'm a big fan of you don't want to miss that talk with the Qigong and the routine. And since the very, since he did that, and and since I met him, I'm trying to think I've had three, like four whole programs, four, like four session classes that he's done for my community. And it's really changed people's lives. Do you want to say anything about Qigong? Because I know that you you want to to tell your experience with it. (laughs) I started doing it about seven, eight months ago. And um, I really had tried other Qigong exercise classes in the past and honestly they just sort of 
either they were just too slow and too boring or you couldn't follow the instructor. Whereas with Matt, he, he talks, he talks you through it and he shows you exactly each move and all facets of it, be it the breathing, be it how you, you move your arms or you'll move your feet and how you integrate it together. And I, you know, I, my balance was okay, but now I'm, I'm, I'm like a rock. I can go up on one leg and sit there like the karate kid and stuff like that. And no, I love Je Matt Jeffson. I, I take that with me to the hospital because I've got a hold of some of the, uh, the tapes of the things and I can do that where I'm stuck there for catching babies, not stuck, but there for a while. And I love it. So I got much better balance from that. So I thank Matt and Margie for bringing that to my attention. Yeah. So we do it on a regular basis, Craig and I. But the thing is, is that, you know, you, know, you can take any part of that and easily incorporate into your life. Plus, it's so relaxing. You'll sleep better. It's just a wonderful mind-body practice as well. So that's in the summit. So I wanted to share that. The other thing is that Joan, Joan Pagano, one of my favorite exercise instructors, and I think I, I, a little fun fact, I think you know this, Craig, that she was the personal trainer for Jackie Onassis and Carolyn Kennedy. And, but she's just a great, she's really wonderful and she has a great way of explaining things. But on the summit, she talks to us about how, what you can use with bands and, you know, the weights and how you can set up your own home gym. So, you know, you don't have to go to the health club. It, it you know, it's, I would definitely look into that talk to see what you can use to start doing things at home. So I think that's, that's it with exercise. But just, I, I think the message that we're trying to tell you is it's such a big piece. It, it's huge. I think that no matter, everybody can exercise. And what we're seeing now is, you know, bone density is increasing. But besides that, and bone architecture is increasing. But besides that, if we prevent a fall, that's that's the that's the whole goal. I love John Newstadt's talk. And that's available now to Dr. John Newstadt on fracture-proof your bones. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what that bone density says if you fall and have a fracture. So you, the, our goal is not just improving our bone de you know, density. Our, our goal is fracture-proofing our bones and preventing fractures. So, oh, one more thing I wanted to say about balance. <laughs> you know, I tried to give in the registration gifts that are free. So there's a sheet on osteoporosis exercises to improve balance and posture. So I, I record my favorite ones in terms of some easy balance things that, you know, should be that mo I think most people can easily do that you can put into your life right away. So there's one she on that sheet as well as posture exercises. And on that sheet, the other thing that's so good is that there is like what you can do in your house to fall proof it. So there's a little diagram that gives you and because how sad you have a loose rug in your house and that's what causes you to fall and fracture and break a hip. So it just goes through some of the areas you don't know and some of the tips that you can do. So there's a whole sheet on that, that, you know, you can get started on your balance right away. So that's all I want to say about exercise. But please, please figure out, you know, don't get overwhelmed. That's my big thing in terms of, in terms of the whole thing with, you know, helping your bones. It, it, it didn't happen overnight. You don't have to worry about, you know, one thing at a time. There's no rush. And, you know, so so you can just get started on, you know, whatever exercises, but just make exercise a priority for 2024. And I think you'll be so happy because there's just so many benefits. Yeah, I think that's a really huge point about osteoporosis. It doesn't just suddenly hit. It is slow coming and you can see it. I'm I'm talking to my 20 year olds and I'm talking to the moms about trying to get their kids on eating well when they're in their teens and educating them about their lives because if you start things earlier, you're going to have the habits and the nutrition that will help reduce your risk of all of these. And even when you're in your 40s and your 50s and 60s and 70s, you can make differences by modifying your behavior. And that's one of the things that. I think Margie's done a marvelous job of pulling all those kind of people into the summit with the nutrition and the stress reduction, the happiness things. I mean, the things that people just take for granted, believe me, a lot of people aren't using any of that in their life. And these things are going to make a big difference. So I think that we all have to accept that that's another big piece of this, why the successes of what you've done over the years has been much more impressive than others. 
you know, it's interesting. Also, another talk that's one of the three three talks that are available right now. It's a new talk is Dr. Maya Shitri, and she talks about indigenous practices. And they, you know, many of these cultures had no osteoporosis back that what they, you know, these these communities. But one of the biggest things that she talks about is community as well as practices for gratitude and the stress reduction. And so that's, you know, we can't, and she takes us through a little gratitude practice, but we can't minimize how important that piece is. And I know everybody wants to, I know it because they don't really care. This is what I found. Like, tell me the exercises, tell me the nutrition. Oh yeah. But yet that, oh yeah, about the stress reduction and happiness is just as important. And I, I try to get that message across in everything I do. And I don't know how effective I am with that, but <laughs> but I, I, I I'm, try. I'm happy. <laughs> but try it, everybody in 2024. Yeah. Do incorporate that piece. And in the summit, I I do all new talks every every morning. I mean, that's not the morning, but the talk I do it. It's the first talk. Every day there's a new happiness habit that I introduce. That acrylic really is life changing. They seem simple. But I challenge you to try them and see which ones you like. And then you can adopt, you know, add those to your repertoire and just see your life change. Okay. So anyway, I just wanted to say that that piece that you mentioned with the stress and the happiness is so important. And, you know, why not make your life happier while you're improving your health? If there's so many health benefits. So, yeah. So all that's in the summit as well. So I think we wanted to just kind of brush back on root causes for a few moments as well, because there's a lot of talks on that. And maybe some of those talks are kind of surprising to people. They don't realize all these other health conditions can be chipping away at your bones as well. So why don't you tell us a little bit about some of those people and some of the information you found? Yeah, I think day one, I mean, this is, this is I think, what really makes a difference if your program is going to be effective or not, is that you know, anybody can go on a medicine or anyone can exercise. And yes, that's all important. But if you're missing the root cause, so let's say digestion is one of your root causes. And it's sort of as though, you know, you're, you have a hose and you're watering your plants and then you step on the hose. So you're giving yourself all this good food, but then you're stepping on it. You know, you're, you're not digesting it. So you're not going to be absorbing the nutrients that are needed for your balance. You must, no matter what you do, you must address the root causes. And so I have so many different practitioners discussing different things. And day one, though, back to Dr. McCormick, he goes through the testing. Um, but I also have people talking about blood sugar and even molds. You know, anything that causes inflammation is going to increase the activity of the cell that break down your bone. So we need to deal with this. Peter Kahn talks about having enough energy and like how you would deal with certain, you know, with certain autoimmune things and certain conditions, what would the order be? So there's just a lot of things, even something called mast cell activation could be one of your root causes. So I think it's really important to see um, another talk that's that I had. What I wanted to do this year is add things that I felt people would really benefit from. So Dr. Kim Millman has been working for 15 years. I don't really know anybody you know, other than Dr. McCormick, but she's an MD, her specializing in osteoporosis, an integrative approach. So she has been doing all the things we've been talking about for over 15 years. So she put together an actual master class instead of, she has a class in there for, that she did in terms of a case studies that was very helpful. But she put together this master class called the Healthier Bones Master Class where she goes through her integrative approach as well as some of the root causes, and she gives some practical steps. So I'm going to share just just a few little tips that I thought were so interesting from her talk, which you definitely don't want to miss because it's full of really great information, and she has slides, and she just put this together in such a great way. So one is glucose, and I see this all the time where people will get their glucose tested. That's a, that's a test that people do get, you know, most doctors order that as part of the panel. And sometimes if there's a question, they'll order an A1C, which is which is a measure of like three months, your average glucose. But here's the thing. People with diabetes and insulin resistance have a higher fracture rate. And they found that the A1C 
of 5.7 to 6.4. Now, 5.7 is just considered pre-diabetes. And I can't even tell you how many women I see who have 5.7, 5.8, and the doctor doesn't even alert them to it because it's not diabetes. But yet they found that if you have an A1C of 5.7 to 6.4, you have a 24% higher risk of fractures than people below 5.7. So the point is, it's really helpful for so many reasons to work on your blood sugar. And what the most important thing, what Dr. Millman said, is to reduce your glucose spikes when you're, you eat something and your glucose shoots up. And you can tell that on something called a CGM, a, you know, continuous glucose monitor. But these glucose spikes are more damaging than when you have flatter curves. So just a couple of things I wanted to share. I could spend you know, hours on this, but this is just a few things. So what she recommends, which I do as well, is that when you're having carbs combined, don't just eat a carb that could, you know, if you're eating a piece of bread or a carb, combine it with fiber, protein, and fat. And she brought up a study that I wasn't aware of, but the the results are something we can easily put into our life. We are just changing the order of the food, the order that we have the carb had a big effect on blood sugar. So what they did in the study was they took a meal of ciabatta bread, chicken breast, salad and butter. And they found that if you ate the carbs first and they looked at the blood sugar at 60 minutes, so it was, the blood glucose was 199, okay, versus if you ate the carb last. So let's say, you know, so for example, the bread you had, so you had your salad first and the vegetables, first, it was 125. Can you imagine? So there was a 37% decrease by just eating the carbs last, having the salad first, having the vegetables first. I thought that was incredible. But then when they measured insulin, and when you have too much insulin, that's inflammatory. And that can really have negative effects on our bones. So the same thing after 60 minutes, it was 125. And then this is with the carb first. But when they had the carb last, it went to 63. So a 50% decrease. Anyway, I thought that was just something that's important. And do look at your glucose. And I think it's something that we, you know, it, there's so many effects on high glucose and high insulin. And as I said, people don't usually talk about it and and the doctors until it's considered diabetes, when pre-diabetes has issues as well. And on the summit, Dr. Brian Mole, he's the diabetes coach. He gives also, he has a whole talk on um, reducing insulin sensitivity, which is so very common and a risk factor for osteoporosis and it affects your bones. So I thought that was really important. And I can't agree with you more. Uh, A lot of my patients in their 40s or 50s are showing uh, elevated glucose levels and getting hemoglobin A1Cs. And as Margie said, they're just being told not much. Just go out and exercise and eat well. There's not much guidance. So I can't disagree. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And of course, there's other silent or sneaky little effects of food that I know are affecting our bones too. And I know that a lot of my patients like to eat some of their leafy greens and there's some hidden uh, bombs in some of that food too. Do you want to talk about the oxalates for a minute? Yes, I think this is so important because this year I really deep dived into oxalates because after the last summit, there were a lot of questions and people were freaked out, which I understand because it's sort of a topic. It's not a pleasant topic because here you're working hard and you decided, okay, a lot of people can't tolerate dairy. And so they're eating tons of almonds, tons of almond milks, which is a high oxalate food. And they're having, or they see they think spinach is a good food, you know, so they're trying to eat high, good foods that are high, they think high in calcium. And the problem is they're high in oxalates. And so what happens is the oxalates are tiny crystals and they, they attract positively charged minerals. So they bind to the calcium, making it an indigest, making it indigestible. So you're not, you're not, they're blocking the absorption of the calcium, but there's a couple talks on the summit with Julie Matthews, but they're also, you know, besides that, they're also blocking the absorption of calcium from other places as well. But here's the big kicker, I think that's the most important part. And Dr. Millman, a couple people talk about this, but Dr. Millman explains how it's like shards of glass, the way these oxalates are. And they can lodge if you have issues in any organs and tissues and cause inflammation. 
So, you know, she also shied away from it because it was an upsetting topic. But once she started bringing that up with people, what she found in her community, and she shares these stories of people having pain, they didn't realize the pains from the oxalates. So here people are trying to increase their calcium, you know, whether they're taking almond milk every day, as I said, um, Swiss chard, you know, some of these very high oxalate foods. But one woman, 90% of her neck pain was gone when she reduced the oxalates. And you have to sort of do it slowly. You can't just stop them. Um, another person had chronic UTIs. This is interesting for you, Craig, with your patient population. Several people had chronic, but one person in particular, chronic UTIs. And she was able to get rid of that with getting, you know, with, with reducing all the high oxalate foods in her diet. Another person had chronic leg and muscle soreness. So it's a it's something I think people need to look at if they have these symptoms, they can't figure out what they are. So on the summit this year, as I said, Dr. Millman explains what she's seen with her community, which is just so great. And then Irma Jennings. Irma Jennings talked about oxalates and she's, you know, a health coach who deals with osteoporosis. And she shows us, first of all, she made some great charts. So she shows us her really fabulous charts of the high oxalate foods and what you can substitute. And then there's something called a chronometer, which is an app. So she shows us how you can actually use the app. So the point is, she takes this information on oxalates and puts it into practical use. And I think it's you know a really good talk. And as I said, it's not something we can hide away from. And certain people it can be life-changing just to know this might be an issue. Not that you can't have these foods, but not to always have high oxalate foods and you can, you know, and you can make substitutions and it's just a matter of knowing about this. So yes, that's so interesting. Yeah, you bring up some really interesting points and I know we're going to be closing our conversation in a few minutes, but sometimes the things you, you drop out there or I listen to are, are, are changing lives, even for my patients. And, you know, Diva Boone is a great example, who's a, a parathyroid surgeon. And, you know, the information that you related to me about her talk about the, the calcium levels, which we see on all of our patients who have a complete metabolic profile, we glance at them, a little, little low, a little high, we just flush them out because that's what we've been trained. But in reality, they're different based upon your age. And because of Diva Boone, I went back to Margie with one of my patients who was 42 years old, and she turned out to have a slightly elevated calcium, just 10.9, and 10.8 was normal for her age or below her. And it, I think she had, it, is that what she had? Because really they say- It was just a little high. Anybody it over was. 10, over 40, it's considered high. Right. Yeah. Well, but it, if on the uh, if you look at the data in, you know, published by the lab companies, it's 10.8. And so you know, I just kind of left it, and then I remember talking to you about it. And- Turns out that we went back to Diva and she said, no, follow her up. And she had a parathyroid tumor at age 42, which she had removed since she had the summit. So, you know, sometimes you know, the doctors, we this, this is not stuff that we learned. And I, I wish I had enough time and energy to go back and kind of listen to everything I do. But, and we write it down and not forget any of it. But I think that's just one good example of how, you know, the summit just has a lot of things in it that you wouldn't think about it. Um, and I can think the other thing which it reminds me is about exercise. And one of the big things that we started with got 25 years ago was how people were doing exercise that was just wrong uh, for them. People were doing, you know, these, you put your hands above the head and pulling down heavy weights. And I had patients, you know, rip their rotator cuffs. So I had, you know, we had patients who injured themselves when they're trying to do the right exercise. And now here you are showing them the right exercise, how to live their lives differently. And it makes a huge difference. And these are the little little things that people don't always appreciate that the subtlety of what you're trying to give people is just so many new tools that are just part of their daily life that they stop and look at it. They can say, oh my God, I can't believe I was doing that sit up that way, or I shouldn't have done it that, that. It's amazing I haven't hurt myself. And so I appreciate that a lot. And, and I know the summit is just full of nuggets like that. And you always see to be able to draw those out of your, and your interviews from your, your, uh, people you talk to, you had this nice and sneaky way of getting people to fess up and tell you stuff that maybe uh, they weren't planning to tell you about certain conditions. Well, the truth is that it's a labor of love. You know that. <laughs> I do know that because <laughs> it it's always it's. All, but the but I get I it's it really warms my heart when I hear that someone changed their life or they found a practitioner. That's the other thing. 
that a lot of people listen to someone on the summit, and there are a lot of people who work virtually, you know, whether it's Dr. McCormick, um, Dr. Lonnie Simpson will look at, she doesn't see patients, but she will review someone's DEXA scan. And, you know, and if you need another opinion, or they're just people, um, Dr. Tabitha Barber is a functional gynecologist, Dr. Felice Gersh, who's in California, has seen numerous people, and Dr. Millman. So the point is, people find the practitioner or someone they like, you know what? I think this person could help me. So that's, that always makes me happy when they thank me because they've learned from, you know, they found practitioners. Or Dr. Shiroko Sokic talks about Eastern medicine techniques for that a lot of people have no idea, but she's worked with people after the summit. So people a lot of times find practitioners, they find tools. I mean, that's my goal. And just but what you said about Dr. Diva Boone, um, on the one, one summit, the first summit, absolutely, um, 20 people, 20 people found that they needed parathyroid surgery. And there's been so many more since then because of listening to her talk. And just, it's it's really, it's really incredible because, you know, if you're, if you have an issue with the parathyroid tumor, you are losing bone. You know, your parathyroid is taking calcium and, and taking it right out of your bones and putting it in your blood. So if your blood calcium is over 10 and you're over 40, um, yeah, listen up to Diva Boom. But, and, and she says, unfortunately, just like you said, they don't teach us in medical school. So you have to be your own advocate and look at your blood work and look at your blood calcium. But yes. So there's so many good things, and I'm so excited because it's the new year. So first of all, Happy New Year, everybody. We didn't even say that. Happy, Happy New Year. And I'm such a big believer in manifesting. So you just visualize yourself whatever you want, you know, that you your healthy bones and you're active and just put that out to the universe because I really believe that's all possible for you. I can't say anything other than you said it's correct. I can't even get that level of encouragement and excitement <laughs> as you can generate in that second. That smile is just a killer. And I love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we've been married how many years now? Or Two? Be... <laughs> no, it's going to go on 30, 40 uh, next year. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? 40? <laughs> wow. And it's gone so fast. And I've been the happiest guy. I think gratitude is part of my life. And the happiness, I, I again, makes my bones incredibly <laughs> strong. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining me and all the links to the summit are here now. You get your free gifts right away just for registering and you can keep those in the talks or the three talks that I mentioned are available right away. So lots of great information and I just can't wait to have people you know, hear the new talks and for people who have never watched any of the other programs, you know, there's just, there's just so much information. But as I said, don't get overwhelmed. Whatever you do, whatever you gain, you know, be grateful for it. Not be grateful for it, but just like be proud of yourself that you're taking the time and you're doing something good. And it's just a win-win situation. So uh, I guess anything else you want to say before we end? The summit is great. <laughs> <laughs> and you should tell people that they can listen to it for free. Right, right, right. It's free every day, and yes. and um, right. So there's no charge. You can just listen to it, and the free the gifts are all free. They don't go away. You download them, you keep them, and you know there's also some other free gifts too. So yeah, so uh, try to make it that everybody will gain something from it, even if you've gone before. There's so many new things that, as I said. Anyway, thanks so much. Thank you, Craig, for joining me today, and happy New Year again to everybody. Let 2024 be a fabulous year for all of us. I hope you enjoyed my discussion with Craig. And now I have some new tips you can put into your life that will improve both your bones and overall health. I am so excited about the summit that's starting January 15th. And just by registering, you'll get access right away to some free gifts, as well as the three talks that are released early. I really hope you'll join us. There's so much information that I think can make a big difference in the new year. So happy 2024, and thank you for listening to the podcast, and I look forward to seeing you both at the summit and the next episode.